Have you seen Event Driven Ansible Controller yet? Let me show you. And there it is, Event Driven Ansible Controller. Looks amazing, let's log in. So as soon as we log in, we get this nice little dashboard that shows us our role runs over time. We also see the projects that we've synced to this event-driven Ansible controller. We see decision environments, rule audits, and rule book activations. Now we have no idea when any of those things are. Let's talk about it. First thing that you might wanna do when you set up event-driven Ansible controller is to create or import an automation controller token. You do this under user details, controller tokens. Now this controller token enables you to do things like launch a job template or run a playbook and it's very easy to import. So I'll just go to create a brand new controller token, give it a handy name, give it a descriptive description and drop in the token here. Now once I do that I can create controller token. Now that one was totally fake and I'm really not going to be using it so I'm going to go ahead and delete that token. Now the next thing I might do right after creating a controller token is to import a credential and now I'm not using any credentials in my environment because I do everything in the open but if I did have some private repositories I would simply select create controller give this a super useful name of an incredibly descriptive description and then select a credential type we have three credential types right now we have github GitLab, personal access tokens and container registries so not only can I use this credential against a private repository but but also a private container registry and I'll show you why you might do that in just a moment so let's just do a, a github personal access token here we'll give a username and drop in the token here now we'll go in and create that credential boom there it is it's done okay so once that credential is created we can now access two private resource types if they were private we can also import public ones without using this credential next thing we might do is create or import a project now I have two projects here one of them is complete garbage so I'm going to go ahead and delete now creating projects is just as simple as creating credentials hit the create project button give it a super useful name and a very descriptive description Next, from here, let's import the SCM URL. Now, this is just the path to the repository on GitHub that I'm using. And then I can select my credential that I created and go ahead and create the project. Now, you might be thinking that was a fake token. Yep, you're absolutely right. I don't need a fake token or a real token in this case because this repository is public. So even though it's fake, it will also report a status of completed and successful because it is a public project. Now, if I go back to projects we can see both of my projects listed here now one thing I didn't really cover here was you know actually what happens if a rulebook changes in source control what if I'm in my project and I make a change to instruct SQS YAML which is a rulebook that I constantly run um, what if I need to ingest those changes well it's as simple as resyncing that project and once that sync happens you'll see the brand new git hash representing the latest commit on that repository for that branch and and then we'll be able to run the brand new edits to that rule book. Okay, so after projects, we may need to import a decision environment. Now, a decision environment in event-driven Ansible is much like an execution environment for like automation controller and things like that. It is a container image that contains all of the prerequisites for running our rule book. Now, I already have a default decision environment here, and if I take a look, it's just using the default image that comes with the installer for Ansible Automation Platform 2. .4. Now, if I wanted to create a brand new one, it's just as easy as creating a credential in a project. Hit that create decision environment button here, give it a super useful name, a very descriptive description, drop in the path to the image, that's not a real image so it's going to fail, and then drop in a credential. Remember, we can pull, custom, we can pull private um, images from a private repository or public images from a public repository. So you can either specify that credential or leave it blank. So we'll create that decision environment. It's probably going to fail if it ever tries to pull this because this isn't an actual container image coming from a registry. It's time to run a rulebook activation or rather specify a brand new rulebook activation. So you can see I have three of them here. One of them is absolute garbage. Let's delete it. I don't want that anymore delete that rulebook activation now I have one running and one stopped those are the statuses that are reported for
for my rulebook activations here. Now running, you might be questioning, why does it have this spinning blue circle logo thing? Well, it's because rulebook activations and rulebooks in general are constantly running in the background. They are interrogating that source or waiting for a new event coming from that source and waiting to see if those conditions of the event payload match and that it'll execute an action. Now to be able to receive that event payload, it needs to be running in the background listening for the event, right? So running means, yep, I'm running. I'm running in the background waiting for new events. So if I wanted to create a new rulebook activation, it's just as easy as creating a decision environment, a credential, and a project. Just hit the create rulebook activation button here. Give it a really, really like name, a great name that sticks out, that stands out, that you'll never forget, and a very descriptive description again. Select your project. I'll go with Colin EDA project since that's actually real. And once I select that project, I'll have a listing of all the rule books within that project. Now, one note here, make sure you nest your rule books under this top level uh, rule book directory within your project. Otherwise, event driven Ansible controller won't be able to find them. So, Open up that rule book drop down. You'll see, let's see, instruct SQS. That's one that I'm already running. Select your decision environment, default decision environment. Now we also have this concept, concept of restart policies. So if this rule book activation shuts down, the restart policy of always says to always restart it. The restart policy of never, never restart it. And the restart policy of on failure only restart this rule book activation if it exited as the result of a failure. So let's select on failure. We also have this variables box here. This is this is where it, you know this is where we can specify variables that will be reused within the rulebook. So you could give it a key value pair of foo bar, and then foo is now available to that rulebook, and with the value of bar. Right? These variables are passed into the rulebook. Um, we can also select whether to enable this straight away or you know create it and have it in the disabled state. So let's do that because this is kind of fake anyway. But there it is. We can see the restart policy, the project git hash, so I know if there's an update on the git, the, the underlying project that I need to run to ingest new changes, right? But I also see the default decision environment, the project it's coming from, the variables that have been specified, so on and so forth. So let's go back to rulebook act activations. Let's take a look at what a running rulebook activation looks like. And I have one here. It is instruct events. And I gave it a little note of SQS here because it is subscribed to a simple queue service on AWS. Now, if you're wondering what the blurry part at the bottom of the screen is, don't worry about that. It's just an AWS key that I should have taken out before I recorded this and I didn't. But anyway, you can see all the same details here for this particular rulebook activation. Now, the cool thing that we haven't talked about yet is this history tab. Now, if you have ever run Ansible rulebook on the command line, you have the standard out of the execution of that. That's what history is here. Now, I've never restarted this activation. It's never failed on me. I wrote the perfect rulebook the first time, so there is no history here of previous rulebook activation runs. So so we only see the present one that is currently running and has been running for the past couple days, which is amazing. I wrote the best rule book I've ever written. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to see the standard out of Ansible rulebook executing this rule book, I click on that link and now I have a page that I can scroll through to see the past activations or, um, you know, anytime an event came in to match a rule and execute an action. Now, this actually isn't the best thing to do. We don't really want to see all this debug output, output, right? Now, to see the events that came in that triggered some action, I use the rule audit view. Now the rule audit screen shows me a list of every time an event came in that matched a condition within a rule book and triggered some action here. So these names here are actually rules within my rule book. If I take a look at my rule book, I will see, you know, I have a sandbox failure. I have a service now sandbox that's been created. I have a positive review and each one of these headings within here matches up to a rule that's been executed based on the conditions of a payload we've received and I can go in and check out the actual event that triggered this action so if I go into the details page I can see when it was created 
when it was last fired, the rule book activation that it re re that it corresponds to, so on and so forth. I can also see the event payload that triggered a reaction. So I can see the source type of AWS SQSQ. Remember, I'm reacting to reacting to messages on a queue, and I can look at the payload of that message. That's really cool. I also get a timestamp, and the timestamp is also uh, recorded within the message body as well, so I can use this within subsequent job templates and playbooks and things like that. Now, we have the event that triggered an action, but what about the actual action, right? Here we have the actions tab. Now, you can see that in response to this condition being met and evaluating to true, I'm executing a job template. That job template, if you look closely, is also a link. Why? Well, because it'll redirect me to the job template run on Automation Controller. And here I can see which job template it ran, which execution environment it was running in. I get the entire event payload for the triggering event that met these conditions, that executed these actions through Event Driven Ansible Controller, and then I get the job output as well. So you can see that it printed, this was for a positive review, it printed the brand new review, it ran a couple of things in the background, and then it sent a notification to Slack. Look at that. So from the event payload, I was able to pull out the link for this particular sandbox track that I'm running, which is getting started with event driven Ansible and Ansible rulebooks. Definitely check it out because you know why it has an average score of 4.7 out of five right now. Now, if I click this link, I will be redirected back to the application that generated this event. And I get to see all the recent scores of this. Um, most of them are fives here, but I do see a two not really teaching as much as following directions. Yeah, well, sometimes following directions is a very important part to teaching a new concept. Thank you very much for the review. Back into event-driven Ansible, we've covered creating new resources such as credentials, projects, decision environments. We created new rulebook activations, and we showed how you can how you can actually check out any time a new event was received that triggered a subsequent action. The only things that we have left to cover here would be some of the role-based access controls. We have roles for editor, auditor, all the way through contributor, and we can apply these to different users. Here I have two users, one admin, one Colin. That's me. I'm Colin McNaughton. Thank you very much for paying attention and watching through this demonstration. Please go out and try Event Driven Ansible as soon as you can. Thanks.